Today I have an exciting addition to our Vision Mixing Support to announce. Livestream Studio from Vimeo has been finally supported by Skyhawk Controllers and we have been working really hard with the Vimeo team for the last year to make this happen. We have the LiveFly as the suggested surface for working with Vimeo Livestream Studio. It's the version 6 we're working on. We currently have a better version from Vimeo that has these I API features in it. And uh, we hope that they'll be available when this video is public on YouTube. So if we dive right into it, you see um, we have a live stream studio available here. You see all the uh, some sources we have set up. We have no live sources, but we have graphics and media players and so on. And on the live fly, you have um, in the in the default mode uh, the preview source selection on these rows. If I press the cut button. I have a cut happening if I press, uh, let me find another source right there, um, auto, we have an auto transition. I can use the fader here to make this transition as well if you want to do that manually. You also see we have a nice LED bar that follows the transition along. That's all basic stuff. You don't need to use your keyboard for this anymore. You have a really nice and cool solid Skahoy surface that will do this. So how do we do it? We do it by power over Ethernet um, or Ethernet connected to Livestream Studio, single cable into your Skyhawk controller like we used to. Now, um, there are so many exciting features hidden behind um, the paging function that we find on user key number two. I'll get back to that right uh, in a moment. But first, let's look at the other features that are on the home screen. So we have recording start. So now we start recording. You can see that in Livestream Studio and I can also start the stream. So when I press this button, it will now set up the stream and in a moment we will be streaming live right there. So that is of course controlled from the live stream, uh, sorry, the live fly. Now I'm gonna stop this again. So we have graphics one, two and three. And these buttons will give you the normal pull and push function for the graphics. So let me just um, now uh, push graphics number one. I can push graphics number three. As you can see, if I press them again, it is toggling this function off uh, again. Now, you also know that there's a preview function for the graphics. So if I press this button, I'm now going into preview mode. It means that when I'm pressing this button, I see the preview of the graphics. You can see that in Livestream Studio now and the same for graphics uh, three, for instance. So that's the, the graphics. Um, then for these two knobs, we have audio control. And um, we'll see that if we go to the audio page. Um, I'll, no, wait a second. I think we actually will go to the audio um, section in Livestream Studio. So let's move over here. And now you see audio meters, meters uh, right here. They are currently paired together. So when I'm adjusting the audio volume, you see that they are following along. You see the, the, the values in the displays are uh, moving. So, of course, if you have not seen Skahoy surfaces before, you'll notice that we use OLED displays a whole lot. Reason is, we mo you make these panels really flexible. Um, this panel works perfectly with Livestream Studio, but it also works with other editing suites, which makes it very, very flexible. And one thing uh, that makes this possible is the fact that the OLED displays makes it so easy to reassign functionality. And you'll see that when we browse to the other sections. You know, now I'm just paging through the other options we have to access audio features, for instance. And in those cases, all these buttons are reassigned. But if you notice, the two encoders are actually still adjusting the, uh, the volumes. Now, it, to have these two not um, adjust the volume synchronously, we need to de-pair them in the software. So we can now uh, unlink the record out. So we have the stream out and record out audio volumes assigned to these separately. So now notice when I'm, I'm turning this encoder, I'm adjusting the stream output volume separately from the recorded output volume. You may think that the steps are too small. So now comes a little fact about Skyhawk Sky controllers. Often you'll find that encoders like these, they have a push function that brings you into fine course mode. And by that I mean we are currently having pretty fine steps. These are on the decimal point of dB. So when I press this one, I'm now in the course mode and you can see I'm now adjusting um, in much larger steps. Uh, this is clear when you look into the interface of the software. So this is actually really manageable to quickly get where you want to go. And then you can go into fine mode and you can just tweak the volume of your um, audio levels. And you saw this is now separate from the recorded val uh, volume because it was unlinked. Uh, before we move on, I would like to also highlight another strong point about the OLEDs, which is the naming you 
give your sources. So you can see we have a source here called color A. And if I go to my inputs in Livestream Studio, you see the title color A is right here. So um, maybe we call this bars exclamation mark and now as i'm pressing enter you will see this is changing on the panel so the oled displays will always give you the name of the source also very clever you see if there is a short title you get a big bold font size if you have a title with more characters we are intelligently squeezing the title so that it's still fairly large but it also gives you all the characters you need to see um, and yes, before we move on, I want to highlight the fact that we have a fade to black uh, dedicated button over here. So we are now fading to black. We can go out of that mode again. And the shift key. The shift key is uh, currently set up as a toggle and it will give you access to another nine sources. So if I go back to this mode, we have eight sources set up here, a ninth here, and then we have 10 up to 18 uh, enabled by the shift key here. So that's another typical thing on Skyhawk controllers that the shift key can be used to access additional layers of information and source selection. Let's move on. The menu key over here is um, now bringing us to the media section. So we can now have, we have actually media play full and media play section. This is shown from the display over there. There's a label, play section, play full. You know what that means probably, because if you know Livestream Studio, you also know that we can uh, set in and out points to uh, indicate a section of a uh, particular piece of media. So now let's go to um, this one, for instance. You see we have a playlist of uh, three pieces of media. This media we see right now, it has a section defined, but let's go to the beginning of the media like this. So I'm now in play full, and it means as I'm now playing back media number one, you see it's playing from the, the, the position where the playhead is. In, in, and I can now toggle stop it again, I can now play it again, as you can see, and stop it again, and play it again. Now, uh, if we move on to the play section instead, you'll notice when I start playing back, it is jumping to the in point of the section and playing from that point. Um, um, yep, and then I can of course stop it again if I want to. So that was the media playback. If you want, again, uh, to press the shift key, you can toggle to access more um, media playback options here. If I then move on, you have three sections of audio control. That's pretty extensive in this uh, uh, device here. We have, to give you an overview, access to the volume for the program uh, output. Then we have for headphone. And then finally, we have gain mute settings. Let's move back to the audio for uh, volume for the individual sources. So you see all our sources here. Again, it's named by the label from Livestream Studio, bars, media, player one and two, and so forth. If I uh, push these functions, you can now see that I'm, uh, and we need to go back to the audio uh, input. Wait, uh, I think audio right there. You see uh, four, um, I don't know if bars makes sense. Yes, you can see we have pre-fader listening right here. Did I get one too far? Yeah, actually I wanted to start that. But now we are at this section where we have headphone volume for headphone selected. That's the, the page we are on. And I am now pre-fader listening my sources. You know how it looks in Livestream Studio, and it's uh, clearly what I'm, I'm, I'm setting up there. Um, if I then uh, press the Shift key, you can see I can access additional sources, yes. And by the way, in this, in this case, you can see there's alignment with the upper six buttons here. So instead of using the last three buttons to also indicate sources, the alignment goes in this direction. The reason is that the, the value you see up here is the, the uh, volume for the source that we have on the... Uh, uh, lower button uh, down here. So um, let's see what happens. If I press and hold this, you can see that I'm actually adjusting the volume of the color bar uh, output. It's uh, happening in very, very fine steps right now. But just like with the encoders, there is an option to toggle course mode so that you can move more quickly. And by the way, could could we do that with a button? Can I turn it up again? Yes, you can, because this is four-way buttons. Again, it's a general feature of Skyhoy controllers that buttons can accept presses on either of the four sides. And if you assign that cleverly to functions like volume adjustment, you can bring a volume down, but also up. So how do you think that's happening? If you press the upper edge of the button, we are actually now adjusting the volume in the other direction. You see it in Livestream Studio on the screen right now, although we are in fine mode, so the steps are, are really uh, fine here. The display, of course, shows the, the value in dB of uh, this. And if I press the shift key, as I just said, now we have the um, uh, audio levels for another source that is linked to the button down here. Let's move on from uh, headphone um, 
level here back to uh, this one, which is volume. And uh, then it's the mode for the audio source for uh, program. I'm not sure exactly how you, um, uh, what the words are, but it's basically a change between whether you have an audio source on all the time or if it follows your video output. So you will see that we currently have bars in uh, this mode called um, the, the yellow mode, which is also how this button lights up. And since this is the, my program source, let, let me just switch away from it. So now you can see this source I'm, I'm currently sharing with my, my friend uh, Pierre from uh, Softron. He, um, he is now um, on audio here, but if I press this button, uh, no, actually, I need to do it on a source like this one. So uh, what I do now is I'm toggling for the color bars between whether or not the uh, audio will always be on for the color bars or if the audio will follow the video as I'm changing. So let me go to something else. Let me um, just go to my home screen. You do that on the lower edge here. So I select, let me see, uh, this source, for instance. I make a cut. I now go to my audio section for uh, volume for the program. And here um, I can now, for uh, Pierre, I can uh, press this button and then the audio will always be on. You see it's, it's red on the screen or I can toggle it back to the audio follow video mode. So that was volume related to the programming, to uh, headphones. And if we then go to gain mute, you have access to muting sources basically. So um, you can see I'm just having direct access to these sources. H holding down the shift key, I have access to another two. I can now go between these to mute them, unmute them like that. And in the upper row here, I'm adjusting the gain. Adjusting the gain is just like adjusting the volume. You see it's indicated above the sources. So let's uh, take the gain value for Pierre here. Um, uh, I can now try to uh, adjust it in the interface. You also see that there is correspondence between what Livestream Studio shows you on the screen and what the displays over here will indicate for any of these sources. So I'm now pulling this one and you can see the value is following nicely along here with the gain for source number two, as it's called. Or I can use the key here to also adjust the gain, again in very nice small steps here. I can adjust it down, I can adjust it up, depending on which edge of the four-way button I am pressing. I think that was the complete review of the current configuration for Livestream Studio with the Skahoy LiveFly surface. You can use other surfaces from Skahoy as well, but the configuration we made for this one has been fine-tuned with the Vimeo development team to um, fit the way Livestream Studio works best. Um, I want to make sure that you understand the Skahoy product is flexible far beyond that. And one of the lovely features is that you can reconfigure, you can remove functionality, you can add more functionality, you can integrate with other devices like video routers, PDC cameras, etc. All this is available to you. The configuration for the LiveFly could, for instance, be combined on a panel like the Rack Fusion Live, where there is a section for PDC camera control on the same controller. So please look into our catalog to see all these nice features or visit us at trade shows to have a live demonstration by my clever team of engineers and salespeople.